Hey guys, Rod Sanger of Card Security. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we'll be talking about my gorgeous E24 635 CSI. Okay, so why a 635 CSI? Well, I was actually looking for a sort of modern, classic BMW to add to the fleet and promote the business. Looked at 840 CI Sports and 635 CSIs. In the end, obviously went for a 635 CSI, but this is actually my second 635 CSI. I purchased a Masano Red 635 off a friend, Tom Horner. That needed saving, he'd had it for three years, parked on his driveway, needed a heap load of work. Bought the car, started doing some work, and then this particular car popped up at uh, Merlin's place, the Duke of London. It's in Macau Blue, which is my favorite color for the classic BMs. Saw the car at uh, a car and coffee event at the Duke's place, fell in love with it. Three days later, done the deal. So this is an E24, that's BMW's internal code, 1989 Motorsport 635 CSI. Motorsport, don't get confused with M6. This is not an M6. The Motorsport version was released at the end of the 635 uh, sort of life cycle. And it was um, a limited edition run of 180 units in three colors. Those colors were named after racing circuits. You got Masana Red, Nagara Silver, and Macau Blue. Macau Blue is actually the rarest of those three colors. So what makes this different to the normal 635? What does that Motorsport edition include? So the Motorsport version has the shadow line exterior trim, uh, also has electric sunroof, rear seat head restraints, the tri-color M Sport labels, like on the steering wheel, graduated tinted front screen, memory seats, AC, electric mirrors, headlight wipers, which look pretty cool, the rear spoiler, the leather trim steering wheel, and the rear window blind. Interior specs, which is also part of the Motorsport Edition, is this stunning Lotus White Nappa leather. So all the Macau Blue Motorsports came with the Lotus White Nappa leather, the Masano Red, and the Nagara Silvers came with a black leather. So you've got hand-stitched leather on the seats, the door panels, the center console, the glove box, roof lining, the sun visors, also the door pillars, the upper part of the door trim, and the dashboard. That's a lot of leather in this car. How did I purchase the car and what did it look like? Well, it actually looked pretty good. It looked like this, but without these hard to go wheels. And we'll talk about those in a moment. The previous owner had painted the car, stripped it all back. The wings had been removed. These cars suffered from rust, very typical of 80s BMWs uh, around the wings. That was all treated. There's a fair amount of welding that's been done. Um, some of the, the perishables, like these strips, they were replaced with new strips. Some of the strips here as well. So it was a pretty comp comprehensive restoration that was done by the previous owner. But me, with my paint OCD, it wasn't to the standard that I'd be happy with. Some areas had maybe been rushed a little bit, so around the lower sill area, and also at the back. This section here, underneath the bumper, had been stone guard protected, which is incorrect. So that had to be stripped back and repainted in Macau Blue. Obviously, there's only one painter that I know is probably the best in the game, and that's Greg Howell of Southern Buddies. Another plug for you, Greg. Car was dropped to Greg, and some of these areas were rectified. Car absolutely looks amazing now, on point, and obviously with this stance, it's just 
drop dead gorgeous. Okay, so that's enough about the external body. Let's show you the engine. In fact, let's start it up. Listen to that nice BMW hum. It's quite a big beefy engine there. So this is a 3.4 litre straight six cylinder engine. Uh, it's pretty reliable to be fair to me. Uh, I've had a couple of small niggles. The niggles have been more brake orientated and in fact earlier this year the brakes failed on me on the M25. So I've had a new master cylinder fitted and there's a, a little bit of a leak from the power steering pump uh, and that's going to be replaced as well imminently. Yeah. Engine bay needs a little bit of a TLC, a bit of a clean. I've got somebody in mind for that. And if you look carefully, just where the airlift struts are, you can see on the top you've got the damper setting and you can quite easily adjust it soft and hard. That's on both sides. Okay, let's talk about wheels. Did not come with these wheels, but it actually came with a set of 17 inch hard to go wheels and also the original 17 inch BMW M cross spoke style alloys. Now, the most common wheel choice when the 6 Series are modified is the BBS RS, which is a fantastic wheel. I want it to be slightly different, and because the car came with Hartigas, I thought, let's try and work with Hartigas and try and get a freshly refurbished set of Hartiger wheels. Now, these were actually purchased off a friend of mine, 17 inch Hartigas. Thank you very much, Cos. Um, design C three piece wheels. Um, now these have been stepped up from 17 inch to 18 inch. The widths on the front, they're 18 by nine, and on the rear, they're 18 by 11. You got brand new uh, step lips and barrels, which have been supplied by SRR Hardware, and the wheels were taken apart and built up by the amazing Ellie at Voodoo Motorsport. Tires are Nankangs, you've got 225 35 on the front and 255 35 on the back. The wheels and the stance are what make this car. One of the small mod that I've done to this car, to this shark nose, shark nose? Well, the six series is called a shark nose because the nose cone, it's sort of inward slanting nose cone with the BMW grille, looks like a front of a shark, you know, shark nose. Um, is the number plate yes that is a proper number plate purchased off dvla auctions i think it finishes the car really well okay let's talk about the suspension because i've been waffling on about that quite a few times this has airlift 3h suspension obviously the plan was to go airlift straight out of the blocks uh, the build it's a nice hidden build underneath the rear boot section you've got two two and a half gallon tanks there the compressor and the manifold fit nicely in the spare wheel well drop that down it's hidden now I've waffled on a lot wheels suspension I think it's time we got in the car went for a drive and you can sort of feel and watch how that suspension works in the background so let's go Okay, so what's it like to drive? Well, weighs 1,450 kilograms, which is heavy. 0 to 60 in seven and a half seconds. And uh, top speed about 145 miles an hour. So for 1989, not bad. By modern standards, that's pretty slow. Four speed automatic gearbox, which is switchable. You've got sport mode. I can drop it down the gear, put it into sport. Let's see if it goes. Okay, it gets going you know and when it is going it is very smooth brakes pretty good as well decent stopping power and let's talk about the suspension now the original suspension the stock springs typical of this era a little bit boaty you know these cars big cars you throw it into a corner you can feel a bit of body roll the airlift 3h suspension has transformed this car you can actually now throw it around with very little 
body roll. There's no way you could have done that on the stock suspension. The controller itself, we mounted that in an old retro Motorola phone kit, uh, sort of period correct of the late 80s and 90s. Rather than fitting the controller in the center console somewhere or in the glove box, we thought it looked kind of cool to fit it in a phone kit. The dash layout, well, you've got the trip computer there. That gives you MPH and, uh, and so on. Fantastic head unit, the Blaupun SQR46 DAB, the cool looking retro head unit, which is a must if you've got a, a, an 80s or 90s uh, German car. They all came with Blaupun stereos. That's, uh, that unit's already been reviewed on the channel. I won't talk about that unit. We'll drop a link in. We've upgraded the speakers uh, to just Pioneer speakers. These are four by six speakers. We haven't added a sub. At some point, we'll add a sub and an amp. In terms of ergonomic layout, typical BMW from this area, very solid, very well built. Loads of leather everywhere, being the Motorsport Edition. Big steering wheel, not to my liking. I'll probably change that at some point. BMW layout with the speedo on the left and the big rev counter on the right. You've got the service interval indicator in the middle. On the right hand side, which you probably can't see, we'll throw up a pic. You've got the onboard diagnostics computer, which gives you uh, any updates on any issues that the car might have, you know, if one of the, the bulbs had gone or if the car's low on oil. This is a GT Cruiser, a Grand Tourer Cruiser. It's not something that you're going to try and race hot hatches. However, you can get in, put your foot down and waft along. Airlift suspension is fantastic, very compliant. You know, you don't feel all the, with most BMWs, especially the M versions, you tend to feel every camber adjustment in the road, little stones and you know, you feel everything with this, you don't. Maybe it's those big tires as well doing that fantastic job. One thing which is negative about this car is the steering wheel. The actual feedback and the turning, I don't like that slow response. I'm used to cars where you turn in and bang, the steering wheel's on point. You move in that direction and the car goes. A little negative, and you know, I've got to take into account this is a, a GT car, but it doesn't, it doesn't take away all the drama and the theater of this car. It's still a cool car, still fantastic to drive and a great place to be in. Okay guys, thanks for watching. I've got to say I do love my uh, shark nose. Now, if you refer back to the beginning of this episode, I mentioned I was deciding, should I buy an 840 CI Sport or a 635 CSI? Obviously went for a 635 CSI. Did I make the right call? Should I have gone for an 840 CI? Now, personally, I think I did. However, I've recently started looking at 840 CIs. Should we get one and put our own stamp on an 840 CI? Do what we do, air, wheels and audio, let us know. Obviously, as always, like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. Any questions you have, be about the audio, the security, the wheels, and obviously the airlift suspension, just uh, comment below or drop us an email and we'll make sure we do our best to answer them. Thanks for watching guys. The next episode will be about my M2 comp. So, see you in a few weeks. <laughs>